All right, let's check back with Julie to see if the Marcos are indeed ready to support and listen for insight. Julie, what do you know? Um, so they are they are ready to go. I haven't heard about their slew coming up yet, but they are ready to go. We've heard from them. They're both healthy and they're both doing great, which is just wonderful news. So I think they should be doing a slew in just a minute. Actually, yeah, I think they should be doing a slew in just a minute. We'll stand by and listen okay. then. Oh, they're separated? Oh, no, no. <laughs> you got me going inside so spun it. All stations and systems, we can confirm we are in tree minus 20 minutes. EDL NAV 2 has been initiated. The star tracker has been powered off. That, um, the NAV 2 software has been initi initiated. So when we're in cruise, we use a star tracker in a similar manner to how um, sailors navigated years ago. We look at the stars and get our relative position from them. And we use a star tracker for that. And now that we're close enough to Mars, we don't need that anymore. So we're going to transition to what's called NAV2 software. And that lets us basically just uh, use velocity and acceleration from this point on. So we don't need the star tracker anymore. Um, uh, Mark, I'll clarify, slew to inertial or started bent pipe? Slew to appropriate attitude for bent pipe. Bent pipe mode will be Fantastic. entered shortly. Okay, thank you very much. And that was obviously our confirmation of the slew for Marco, so that's great news. Fantastic. Um, so I was saying before that the, uh, the NAV2 software will propagate from here on out and we'll use velocity and acceleration so we have powered off our star tracker and we're on our now two software and everything's looking great okay thanks thanks julie thanks all right the cruise stage separation is just about four minutes away and rob manning joins us now rob is the chief engineer here at jpl and an absolute veteran of mars landings we're going to play a little video for you right now you haven't seen it yet but we'll roll it Let's go ahead. This is right. Lander is still alive. 14 reports. Carrier lock. Get that day, Rob. There you are. You were the phase lead. You were sitting up front. <laughs> yeah. That's why I look like it when it's successful. Yes. <laughs> I hate to see what it would be like if I wasn't successful. <laughs> But talk about that. What is EDL like? Why is it so hard? Well, it, it's many years of work by many, many people who struggle to put all the pieces together, and particularly because we can't really test entry, descent, and landing on this planet. It's much more complicated. Um, Mars has a lower atmosphere, thick, thinner atmosphere, less EDL gravity. Marco you Tom. just can't put the pieces. So imagine you had a big Broadway production, Marco B but you couldn't really do the show until all the audience shows up. 
So that's what it feels like. So it's so you never really know if you've really done it right. Well, we've done it seven times. Can we say that, hey, piece of cake, we know what we're doing? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, it, 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 we get better at it. And there's no doubt we've learned. We've learned for both the successes and our own failures, including uh, failures of other missions outside of this country. So those pieces come together in our mind's eye. We try to put the, what we learn together and and just do the best we can. And, and if we don't succeed, we will learn because we are collecting data on the way down. If, we, if something bad happens today, we'll be able to take what we learned. Even though we may fall on the ground after getting kicked off the horse, we'll get back up, brush ourselves off, figure out what we did wrong, and get back on the horse. Well, there's a lot of uncertainty. Just very quickly, give us some possible scenarios of what could happen during EDL today, <sighs> especially during communications. Uh, well, the, the, the great news about having communications, there's almost almost anything that go wrong, we, there's a very good chance we'll figure it out. But things like, you know, the parachute has to go right. We know you don't open parachutes on Earth going Mach one and a half. Uh, one and a half times the speed of sound. You just don't do that. You don't need to in this planet, but we have to because if we waited any longer, we'd be on the ground. A very complicated radar system it has to work from outer space all the way to the ground and look for this, look for the ground. What if it locked up on the heat shield? Well, we've tried to avoid that problem. We fixed that problem. We think uh, to uh, to prevent that from happening. But what if we got it wrong? Things like that could could happen, and our vehicle could have things bad happen, but, right. but we worked hard to prevent them. So at this time we expect we're getting that close. We're going to go to the control room for crew stage separation, Rob. Okay. Thank you, MRO. I need to. I need to take off comments. Inside systems, EDL comma. Go ahead. On inside court. At this time, MRO has, will have loaded their electro sequences. Uh, Marco is expecting carrier lock uh, at any time. Marco B is reported there in bent pipe. Um, still waiting on A. Copy that. Thank you. Radio Science Report, UHF carrier detected. EDL con, Marco Bravo, Marco Alpha is in bent pipe mode. Marco Bravo has locked on the carrier. Marco Alpha has also locked on carrier. System based on inside cord. As expected, the DSN has LOS for inside expand. Copy that, thank you. All station InSight systems on InSight court. DSN has lost the X-band signal from InSight, indicated expected cruise stage separation. Standing by for UHF signal acquisition via Marco or Radio Science. We are about five minutes from entry and have confirmation we've lost the X-band signal from InSight. This was expected because we have transitioned from the antenna on the cruise stage to the UHF antenna on board the spacecraft. Ground stations have detected the UHF signal and Marco has locked on the signal. This confirms that InSight is transmitting UHF signals as expected. InSight telemetry through the Marco relay is not expected until about two minutes before entry.
So, Rob, that was exactly what we were hoping to hear, that yes. the Marcos are The vehicle working. has also performed the turn-to-entry maneuver. The vehicle is turning away from a sun-pointing attitude and oriented itself to enter the Martian atmosphere. Uh, this is a big first step. Uh, getting, just getting the, the cruise stage separated, uh, it's now, as, after the vehicle turns itself to the right orientation, the cruise stage is now going to be uh, f get further and further away until it's about three or four football fields away and will burn up in parallel as the vehicle enters Mars. And, and Christine mentioned turn to entry. What does that mean? Well, it's because the cruise stage has to be pushed off to one side uh -huh. like this. The rest of the vehicle has to turn to face the atmosphere and to be dead nuts on as it hits hits the uh, the top of the atmosphere. So this is taking all the heat coming into the atmosphere. Exactly. It'll be both provide a source of drag, but also thermal protection because it gets over 1,500 degrees Celsius on the top of the, on this heat shield. Very very hot. Uh, but on the inside of the heat shield, it may be only a, f uh, a fraction of a few degrees above room temperature. So it's a wonderful protective device to keep our lander safe. All right. So the next thing we're standing by for is is entry, entry. hitting through the going to the top of the atmosphere, and gradually slowing down. Right now, the vehicle's just now beginning to. Will be, very soon, we'll be beginning to feel the atmosphere touching it. Actually, entry is above the atmosphere slightly, so it's really not until a few uh, half a minute or so before after entry before we start really detecting the fact that that atmosphere is slowing us down. All right, we'll be standing by. Yes, exciting. Now, entry is scheduled for 11.47. The crew stage SEP and the entry times are locked in, correct? They are. They're locked in when we selected the target and aimed the vehicle very precisely. That allows us to know exactly when we hit the entry point, which is uh, 35, 55 kilometers from the center of Mars. So we know those times are locked in, but what about all the other events that take place in EDM? Reggie Science reports dropping carrier power as expected. Marco A and Marco B have to want to train. Just heard both Marcos have telemetry. They are doing their job. These small CubeSats are relaying ones and zeros uh, with a few seconds lag from from the vehicle up to the up to these two vehicles, and they re forward them back to Earth to the deep space network using X-band antennas. And, and keep in mind, this was all an experiment. We weren't sure that this was going to work, but we had this need that we didn't have live communication right. in this particular mission. Well, we don't really need communications. We don't need their information, except if something went wrong. We would very much like to get the data right now. We have other spacecraft. We are spacecraft. now receiving insight telemetry via the Marco relay. Ah, it's, it's flowing into this space. The team now can watch the data flowing onto their screens as if they're commuting directly. This data the will provide detailed information about the state of the spacecraft throughout EDL. <laughs> we were on um, pins and needles waiting for that because we weren't really sure. Uh, this is wonderful news. Uh, this this will allow us to give some. Uh, if this continues working uh, all the way to the ground and beyond, uh, we might even see a, a first picture from the surface of Mars. Wouldn't that be great? Very soon. Atmospheric entry on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Here we go. So in a few seconds, the vehicle will start sensing the atmosphere. I said 35, 22 kilometers from the center of Mars, and it's going to start to slow down. 
very, very slowly at first, but then faster and faster and faster till uh, to, to reaches about seven Gs. I made that mistake on the video. It's actually seven <laughs> Gs, not 12. Uh, and so, it, it will, it, but we'll still very, very quickly slow down. And, uh, and, and from 15... In approximately one minute, Insight is expected to reach its maximum heating rate. Oh, yes. Plasma blackout is possible during peak heating and could cause a temporary dropout of telemetry. This could last for as long as two minutes. Yeah, the, the gas that comes off the heat shield as it's slowing down, it looks like a meteor if you're on Mars watching the streak go by. That brightness of gas does interfere with the radio reception. And so it's possible that uh, Marco will lose that signal while it's going through this very hot entry. But not to be alarmed. Not to be alarmed. It's, it's part of the design. We, we, we completely expect it. Radio science reports plasma blackout as expected. Okay. Oh, wow. Ground stations have reported plasma blackout. Still receiving insight telemetry via Marco. Marco Alpha has carrier interruption. Insight should now be experiencing the peak heating rate. Portions of the heat shield may reach nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit as it protects the lander from the heating environment. That's hot. Awesome. Marco Province shows carrier interruption, but still in lock. Insight has passed through peak deceleration. Telemetry shows the spacecraft saw about eight Gs. Marco Alpha and Marco Bravo maintain R lock. Radio science reports carrier detected. Yeah. So, several different communications coming in. Insight is now traveling at a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. It seems to have passed this very critical point of peak heating. And peak deceleration. The next big step is parachute inflation. And you can see that on our timeline on the bottom of the screen. The next event is parachute deploy. Insight is now traveling at 1,000 meters per second. Oh, very close. Once Insight there. slows to about 400 meters per second, it will deploy its 12 meter diameter supersonic parachute. The parachute will deploy nominally at about Mach 1.7. Standing by for parachute deploy. Radio science reports a sudden change in Doppler. Ground stations are observing signals consistent with parachute deploy. Marco Alpha, Marco Bravo, maintain lock status. Telemetry shows parachute deployment. Radar powered on. Heat shield separation commanded. This is really good news so far. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm on pins and needles. Yes. We have radar activation where the radar is beginning to search for the ground. Once the radar locks on the ground and inside is about one kilometer above the surface, the lander will separate from the back shell and begin terminal descent using its 12 descent engines.
altitude convergence. The radar has locked on the ground. Yes. <laughs> Standing by for lander separation. Carrier interruption on Marco Alpha and Marco Bravo. Lander separation commanded. Yes. Altitude 600 meters. Gravity turn, altitude 400 meters. We're getting there. 300 meters. 200 meters. 80 meters. 60 meters. 50 meters, constant velocity. 37 meters. 30 meters. 20 meters. 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. weathering the rain to see this. Today and and the days that follow, before the science can begin. But you know, just getting a vehicle on from Earth to the surface of Mars is no mean feat. And, and Rob, could you talk about that? I mean, just the mere accomplishment here that we're seeing. It, it's you have to understand that this 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 vehicle is very it's very complicated. Um, it uses 12 engines. Each of those engines are pulsed. 10 times a second, producing these little tiny uh, impulses, almost like little bullets that keep the vehicle uh, going at a constant velocity as it, as it approaches the ground, and still going o over five miles an hour. So those legs feel a fair amount of crush. We still don't know the state of the vehicle right now. We need to look to make sure there are no rocks nearby. The solar panels have to are, will be in just, in just a few, uh, in about five to 10 minutes, will begin to open up. They're waiting for the dust to settle because the dust were, was certainly a lot of dust being lifted in the air around the vehicle right now, which is now just settling. So we're standing by after touchdown. It waits um, a, a couple of minutes to give us an X-band beep. And so we are standing by for that. It's a communication that comes directly to Earth from InSight. Yes. Um, and, and it goes uh, to the Deep Space Network. There's also something that might be happening now, if we're very lucky, uh, InSight might be able to relay uh, a, an image or a parcel image taken just a few, a couple minutes after landing. So I'm, I'm standing by hoping to see that. But if that doesn't happen, we'll certainly get more images later. 
uh, in our Odyssey Pass in well, about five hours. We see Bruce Banner waiting for it. They're, 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 they're I, looking I don't for, know if they see it yet. They're waiting. That's, that's Justin Mackey and Bruce Banner um, looking carefully at the cameras to see what they might see. Uh, now, waiting for the image to come back. So this is the first image from Insight itself. Insight Correct. is taking a picture with one yes. of its two cameras. Yes. It's probably a uh, view of what's directly in front yes. of the spacecraft, right yes. in front of the lander. This is a camera that it would be using to figure out is this a good space? Exactly. Is it a good place to put down our instruments? So it is going to take an image and send that image to the Marcos. The Marcos, in turn, will relay it back down to Earth. That's correct. They got it. Oh, no. Let's, let's, let's just wait. Let's see what they saw. There it is. Wow, wow. So it's great. I don't see a lot of. Uh, I don't see a lot of. Uh... Let's explain that image. Now this image has a dust cover on top of it. Video com. We have so, lost the signal for Marco. You can see potentially a lot of. Uh, so, uh, radio science uh, reports that might be uh, on the camera. For UHF. So we don't know what I'm looking Thank at. Thank you, like, everybody on Video Com. Right. Yeah. Yay, Marco! <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, there it is. You can see a better view. You can see that really is debris. And there is the horizon back there, uh, the bluish sky. Uh, um, that's part of the lander deck on the front left. Um, I can't take out, but it looks like there's not a lot of rocks in the field of view. But those dots you see there are very likely to be dust particles on the, on the lens, the dust cover, the dust which cover. will be removed. After, and we'll and get another shot yes. later on. Yes, um, and amazing. a better, clearer view after the dust cutter is removed. So, um, uh, Insights, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, CubeSat's relay communications job is done. They're now flying on. They're now taking pictures back toward Mars. Uh, uh, hopefully, MRO, which flew overhead, might have been lucky enough to capture the descent of this InSight lander on its, under its parachute. Uh, while, was, while, while this was going on, it, MRO was flying overhead recording the data, uh, um, like a, also monitoring the tra transactions and recording every bit of signal it could. And, but it also had the ability to take a picture. And maybe we'll, like we did with, with uh, both Phoenix and later for Curiosity Rover, we might be able to see the parachute inflated that as well. That would be fantastic. We are standing by now for that X-band beat. Yes. Insight phoning home saying, I'm here and I'm okay. System based on inside court, the DSN and x -band. Have a Radio X Science reports x band carrier detected. <laughs> DSN and x band Radio Science have acquired the x band touchdown on the inside. Continue for four and a half minutes with inside in nominal mode. Copy that, thank you. Flawless. Flawless. We've got the beep. We've. Uh, this was perfect case scenario. This is my book. this is what we really hoped and imagined in our mind's eye. Uh, although we spend most of our looking, visualizing all these bad things can happen. <laughs> That's true. Um, and, and sometimes things work out in your favor, and we'll look very carefully at the data to see what might have 
uh, how well it went, um, it, it, but it certainly looked like it was a very successful and perfect landing. We'll have to see um, as we get more data um, how well things go, and right and and. and as the uh, as the vehicle proceeds, the solar panels will be deployed. Hopefully, there's no we're not on a tilt. It doesn't look like we are, but um, from the image, but um, the solar panels will be deployed safely. We hope, and we'll get confirmation of that around five o'clock uh, local time here in, 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 a, in about four hour, four and a half hours, five hours from now. And, and this is such a difficult feat in that. Because of the one-way light time, there is no way that any of these engineers could possibly control the vehicle. No. It all has to be done in commands and software. It's, we have to train it to do this work on its own. Uh, radio science reports nominal carrier 30 seconds past the first acquisition. So we're all nominal on the surface. So the vehicle is completely nominal, reported nominal. Uh, it is, uh, it's happy. The lander is not complaining. Um, we have a, we had a way to tell us if it was unhappy, uh -huh. uh, and it wasn't. It's not unhappy. It's quite. It's it's uh, it's in a normal mode, uh, and so it's going to chug along for the rest of the rest of the afternoon on Mars and finish the activities. All right. Well, Rob, I know you're anxious to get in and yes. congratulate yes, the crew. Thank you so much for sitting here Thank and helping so us out it explain EDL. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll let you go and go congratulate your friends. Thank you. All right. Take care. Inside up, Optoloop recording completed at 20.04.34.